Episcopal Church in Panyan came to be. We were between rectors, not exactly rudderless, um, but in a state of uncertainty about what would lie ahead. I talked about how our spiritual community was started and evolved, at one point dividing into two separate congregations, which, praise the Lord, merged into one community a few years later. What I'd like to do today is to have a closer look at four of these lovely stained glass windows, each of which tells a story of individuals who were important to St. Mark's at different stages of our history as a congregation. First though, I'd just like to give you a short history of stained glass windows. Why is it that there are so many houses of worship that have them? Stained glass was first used in churches about a thousand years ago, but became much more common in the medieval period when cathedrals were being built. And they had many walls and, uh, to fill with light and color, and most importantly, they had lessons for the congregation to absorb. Services in the churches and cathedrals then were in Latin, and not many people except the priests understood Latin. And many people could not read, so the stained glass windows and the wall paintings in Northern Europe were placed there for the edification of the congregation. The images portrayed were scenes from or inspired by the Bible and they were meant as lessons for the worshipers who could study the images and decide that they were going to emulate the saints and turn away from the wicked acts of the sinners. Now, I have seen some wall paintings on Danish churches that curled even my hair. <laughs> oh, one more interesting factoid. Part of the Reformation included the use of the vernacular in church services so the stories from the Bible and other prayers could be understood by those who attended the services so there wasn't as much need for visual props. And there was also a tendency after the Re uh, Reformation to play down the fancy bits in the service and in the buildings. So Puritan ch uh, churches, for example, often had no stained glass windows. They were considered Roman. The church we are sitting in today, though, was not a Puritan church by any means. And there were three windows that were part of the building from the very beginning, all in, re in, re in uh, remembrance of the Franklins, a very prominent Panyan family. Now, I can't leave here with, uh, hi. Um, so I'm going to be up here, but if you want to come closer, we're going to start with this window and you get a chance to stretch your legs. Anybody want to come over? Can you see it well enough from there? Okay. This is, this is called the blue window. Who'd have thunk it? Benjamin Franklin was born in 1809 downstate and he was a prominent attorney in Panyan. And upon his death in 1877, the Yates County Chronicle noted that, quote, his probity of character was acknowledged by all, and in his business affairs he was scrupulously upright, end of quote. Benjamin Franklin was one of the first vestrymen of St. Mark's Church when it was first established in 1837. And by the way, he died of congestive fever. I always like to find out what people died of those days. Congestive fe fever, which is an old term for malaria. Did you know that, Craig? And I, did, I did, didn't even think about there being malaria around here, but that's what he died of. Now, the color of this blue is the main feature, and it signifies heaven and truth and spiritual love. At the top, there's a dove with an olive branch in its mouth, and that's a symbol of peace, especially of peace bestowed by the Holy Spirit. And it can also be a symbol of God forgiving humankind for its transgressions. 
God is said to have chained, sent the flood originally to destroy humankind. But he changed his mind, and when Noah sent out a dove to see if there was dry land anywhere after the flood, the bird came back with an olive leaf, <coughs> meaning that there was dry land somewhere near. And that, is a, that, could, that could represent God's covenant with humankind after that. Under this is a sheaf of wheat, wheat's made into bread, and that represents the body of Christ in the Eucharist. Now, the Good Shepherd. It's right next, right next, right where Kathleen is. The main figure there is Jesus, cradling a lamb and holding a shepherd's crook. He's a symbol of divine care and protection, emphasized by the text near the bottom of the window, I know that my Redeemer liveth. The crown and the cross above his head refer not only to Jesus, but also to the faithful who will be rewarded in heaven. The original window was set in place um, at St. Mark's, as St. Mark's was being built, in memory of Mary B. Franklin, who was Benedict's lovely wife. She was born in 1809 and died in 1867 and was a caring person who made a great difference in others' lives. The Penyan Express called her, I just love the language, quote, an invaluable member of the community in which she lived, a woman who illustrated in her life the noblest virtues of her sex. <laughs> her obituary continues, her ready benevolence and active charity, her zeal in every good work, and in the amelioration of all suffering will long be remembered by those who knew her. Mary B. Franklin was apparently a good shepherd herself in the Penyan community, and I think she would very much approve of our sharing shed. <laughs> um, the window was uh, rebuilt a few decades ago by the Greisinger family from St. Mark's. Uh, I think that was before my time. Does anybody? Recognize the name Greisinger? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Oh, phooey. Um, I, I wish the sun had come down to the next one. It's the second one down. That's the final Franklin window, and it's one of the most touching windows in the church, and it's called the children's window. And it depicts Christ with a child, his hand on the child's shoulder, while well, the child's hands are closed in prayer, pointing up. Christ's right hand is pointing heavenward, and that's a common motif in religious art. And above their heads are lilies, symbolizing purity and everlasting life. And the fine print at the bottom in a round pane is a quote from the Beatitudes. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And the references to purity and innocence, they're, they're relevant, as the window is dedicated in memory of a young Henry Tuthill Franklin, who died in 1878 at the age of 14, of brain fever. And that was either encephalitis or meningitis. The Yates County Chronicle noted that Henry's death was, quote, felt by all the teachers and students at Penyan Academy as a personal bereavement, as the young lad was much beloved by all." End of quote. And all three of those Franklin windows were built into the new church building in 1879. Back to the left side of the church, and it's not the last one, it's the second to the last one, a guy walking around with a, with a cross. And that is St. Andrew. And the religious significance is the depiction of St. Andrew himself with a Latin cross where the descending arm is the longest as his staff. Now, St. Andrew is usually shown with an X-shaped cross because that's what he was uh, crucified on, apparently. But here he's simply holding a cross in one hand while clutching a book in the other, probably the Bible. And at the bottom of the window is a quote from the Beatitudes, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Links to the more recent past are seen 
in the plaque below the window which says, Gift of First Presbyterian Church and grateful thanks for sanctuary, 1957 to 1959. No, if that's the St. Andrews, that's, you mean the, the Christ one? I think this was the window they gave. No, that's the choir one. Yeah, this one says the Presbyterian. The Presbyterian Church? Okay, good. Um, where was it? Okay, when the Presbyterian Church, St. Mark's neighbor across the parking lot on Clinton Street, burnt down in 1957, St. Mark's invited their congregation to worship at St. Mark's until their new building was completed. So the St. Andrew window is for St. Mark's, a symbol of friendship and gratitude. Mm -hmm. And they also let us park it in the parking lot, <laughs> except on <laughs> Sundays. Four windows, four stories of integrity, devotion, love, and friendship, all at St. Mark's. They've been here to view every time we've come in here to look. We probably haven't done it. But now, you know, as Paul Harvey used to say, the rest of the story. <laughs>